It is 19 minutes after 7 o'clock, 719 on this Tuesday morning. Your Arklatax weather forecast from weathertab.com looks like this for today. 20% chance of showers and storms this afternoon. Look for a high today of 90 degrees. Tonight, 20% chance of showers and storms. Low tonight, 72. Tomorrow, 40% chance of showers and storms. High tomorrow, 88 degrees. Right now, we have some clouds, but some sunshine. 67 degrees in the Arklatax. Well, yesterday the Bowie County Commissioner's Court met in New Boston, Texas, and as he does every time the Commissioner's meeting comes in the next morning to explain exactly what they did and why they did it, Bowie County Judge Sterling Lacey, thank you for joining us. Good morning. All right, yesterday you guys met, and uh, talk about a little bit of what happened yesterday. Well, we had, first we had a report from the sheriff, uh, just a general report about the security measures that we're going to take uh, at the courthouse. Um, and then in two weeks, uh, we'll have our regular meeting, and during that meeting, we'll go into an executive session where we'll take a look at the specific security items they'll be doing, which cannot be made public. Okay, excellent. Um, are you, were you pretty much satisfied with how the, how the committee worked and what they did? Oh, absolutely. And uh, my understanding is they broke out in subcommittees. Again, the citizens that came forth with uh, security and law enforcement military background right here in Bowie County just amazed me. That's why I went from two citizens to six citizens Mm. on the committee. Sure. All right. Speaking of committees, you appointed a committee recently. I say recently. It's been a couple months now about the public comments. This has been, you know, this this has amazed me how this thing is just mushroom because, you know, you and I talked about this uh, a year ago when we were going to all the county commissioner's court meetings and realized that there's no place for public comments on the agenda. And we wanted to get that on the agenda because I've said this many times before that I believe it makes government at least appear friendlier to the people that if you have public comments on there, Someone may never exercise the right to do that, but at least they have the right to do that. Under the current system, that is not in place, is it? Uh, No, it's not. And and that's what's interesting. And and what we've seen happen, Jeff, is we've seen a lot of heat, but not much light on this issue. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, some folks may have seen some things been written about me for uh, trying to limit the rights of people to come and speak in court. And I, I think of that story about Abraham Lincoln. Uh, people called him a filthy storyteller, mm. and he kept silent. They called him a despot and a tyrant, and he kept silent. They called him a liar and an ignoramus uh, Abe, and they kept silent. Finally, one day, somebody called him two-faced, and he could not hold his tongue any longer. He said, if I were two-faced, do you think I'd wear this one? <laughs> <laughs> and so what yeah. we want to do here this morning, we want to shed some light uh, on the subject of uh, what a lot of people and some in the media don't seem to understand is that uh, under the Open Meetings Act, it gave the public the right to come and watch their government in action, but not to say anything hmm. unless the local government body it, it sets up some rules and guidelines that invites people to come and speak. And that's what we want to do. We want to set up guidelines so that people can come and uh, share their ideas. My goal has been not just that they can come and address things on the agenda, but they can actually come and bring up an an issue to our attention that's within our jurisdiction. Sure. Okay. And bring something to our attention that we had not yet considered uh, in the hopes that, of course, that we would put it on the agenda and the court would consider it. But if somebody brings something new into a meeting, we can't consider it at that meeting because the public hasn't been given notice the commissioner's court was going to consider that issue. Sure. So I really want to extend the rights a little further than we commissioners uh, and the judge actually have on commissioner's court so that uh, the public has even uh, a greater freedom than we do of what's going to be discussed. Sure, and I highly encourage you, if you, if you want to do this, and if you're going to attend these meetings, which I highly encourage you to do so, I do encourage you to go to the uh, Attorney General's website in the state of Texas and go there and watch. It's, what, 61 minutes long? 61 minutes and 31 seconds. Yeah. (laughs) Watch that thing because all elected officials in Texas have to watch that and get a certificate for that. Uh, And we, the people, need to understand it as well. The Open Meetings Act is is a law that is in force in the state of Texas. Uh, Matter of fact, I learned something here recently because uh, there was an allegation against you that uh, you had conducted a walking quorum by talking to members of the committee, by giving them suggestions to the committee. When in reality, an advisory committee, and that's what that committee was, was an advisory committee, according to the Attorney General's office that I spoke with yesterday, uh, they do not consider an advisory committee to be subject to the Open Meetings Act. 
Right. An advisory committee does not have to give a notice and meet in public because there's not a quorum there. And so um, there's what can happen is people can take a, a phrase out of the law in one area and apply it generally. And that phrase is in the law. It just doesn't apply to the exact situation that they have applied it to. Mm. And I think we've seen that happen here. Sure. Well, what is the next step with public comments? Uh, I, I'm going to put it on the agenda in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, you know, the commissioner's court uh, tabled the committee report. Mm-hmm. We never brought it to a motion and a second so we could amend it. And so what I want to do, I want to be prepared in two weeks so that uh, if they do not bring the committee report back to the table, then I want to have an item on the agenda where we go back to the original document recommended by the Texas Association of Counties, and we work on it as a committee the whole. Now, will that mean that you'll take it in segments, or will you take the whole thing as a whole and try to vote on the whole thing? I think we'll have to take it in segments. Um, I, I won't know until we get into the meeting and I see what the opposition is or the agreement is. Uh, if there's enough opposition, then we'll take it by segments so it will get as much of this passed as we can. Excellent. Yeah, because to me, again, by putting public comments on the agenda, people then at least have, at least it opens a door for them to come in and to make comments according to what the commissioners can and can't do. Uh, And like you said, hopefully get something on the agenda that maybe you guys have overlooked or something. And then we'll move forward to trying to get at least one session a month in the evening where the public will be easy for working the daytime working people to make it to an evening program absolutely great stuff all right judge lacy thank you sir for stopping by and doing this we appreciate it thanks for having me thank you so much it is 7 26 26 minutes after seven o'clock coming up next we got fox business report followed by arklatax regional news and then coming up we've got michael q sullivan with empower texans we're going to be talking about the elimination of property taxes in texas We'll also be talking about what the legislature is up to in the last few days of the session. That's all coming up on The Voice of Freedom on Freedom 107.